For the longest time, I struggled with distraction. But before you blame social media, I was distracted before the internet was even a thing. You know the meme of the kid blowing air at the fan? That was me. But I'm even worse. I was constantly told off at school because I couldn't concentrate. I generally come in at least 15 minutes late. Uh, I use the side door. That way Lumberg can't see me. <laughs> and uh, after that, I just sort of space out for about an hour. Tell him but, Space out? Yeah, I just stare at my desk, but it looks like I'm working. I used to constantly zone out, look out of the window, and just daydream during school. Trust me, I'm a professional daydreamer. But fast forward to today, and I'm still the guy who's constantly checking his phone for notifications. I spend a lot of time scrolling social media and watching random TikTok late at night. But the big question is, how do I seem to have time for everything? I work in cybersecurity consulting, which is an extremely demanding job. I run a big YouTube channel on the side. I spend time with family. I spend time with friends. I go to the gym, and I even have time for weird hobbies. So much so that those who know me in real life will say things to me like, ah, you must be crazy. Or every now and then someone will tell me, I don't know how you do it. But believe me, I wasn't always that way. It took me years of trial and error, research, reading, self-help books, even attending time management seminars until I figured out what worked for me, but what also worked for the many individuals that I've mentored throughout the years. And I'm gonna share it all with you. Let's get into it. The main model that I use to get my brain in order consists of three pillars. Profession, obsession, and decompression. Profession is essentially your job. This is how you make money. And if you're a full-time student, then studying is essentially your profession. Obsession, however, is the thing that you think about all the time. It's something you're obsessed with. That's not your day job. For example, if your current profession is nursing, but you're in the process of studying to try and land your first cybersecurity job, then your profession will be nursing, but your obsession will be studying for cybersecurity. You're constantly reading about cybersecurity. You watch these YouTube videos, you watch tutorials, you do labs. This is something you're obsessed about, but also this is something that energizes you. This is something you're excited about and something you can be passionate about. Decompression is the activity that you do to de-stress, but you're not necessarily obsessed with. So for me, decompression is simply watching a Netflix show in the evening or just spending some time with my friends. Decompression, however, is the one that a lot of people ignore. I have some of the individuals who I mentor, they come to me and they tell me they are absolutely hardcore, they are dedicated, they just want to study all the time and they don't want to do any decompression activities. And this is fine, but only for a short period of time. I used to do it when I had a big exam in school, or if I'm working on something really big that I really need to finish it, or if I have a deadline, then this is a fine strategy. But at best, this is a short-term strategy. If you want to be truly good at something, if you want to be a master of your own time, then you absolutely have to schedule some decompression time, which I will show you shortly how to do. Now, once you go through the exercise of dividing your attention between profession, obsession, and decompression, then we need to face the biggest problem that our modern society face, which is distraction. I'm not gonna lie, I love social media. I spend a lot of time scrolling social media, which can look to someone from the outside like I'm an extremely distracted individual, yet I still manage to get everything done because I mastered my own distraction. Now, the ability to focus in spite of all the distraction was the hardest thing for me to master. Remember, I was and still am the kid who constantly daydream. So believe me when I tell you this is a real challenge for me. But strangely enough, I learned how to master my own distraction from Seinfeld. In the 1980s, Seinfeld wrote the hit comedy show Seinfeld using a simple big pen and a yellow piece of paper. That show later on made him a billionaire and his secret was time blocking. So when he was writing the show, Seinfeld said that he would have daily time blocks in his calendar where he will dedicate two hours just for writing. He said during those two hours, he's not allowed to do anything. He's only allowed to write. So even if he didn't know what to write or if he get distracted, he was not allowed to do anything. He had to constantly stare at the paper and just simply face his thought until he could write something. What do you do? <laughs> I'll tell you what I do. Nothing. <laughs> But when he finished, he would mark his calendar that this was a successful time block. So the way he kept himself motivated is he liked to see the X marks on his calendar that was reflective of him being productive on that day. Which meant on days where he didn't feel like writing, where he ran out of ideas, he still forced himself to follow that time block because he didn't want to miss an X on his calendar. But before we continue, a word from our sponsor, NordPass Business. NordPass Business is a password manager that provides employees seamless 
wireless access to sensitive information across devices with strong hard to crack passwords. It has so many cool features such as the multi-factor authentication and the auto login feature. It stores sensitive information such as passwords, notes, and credit card information in an encrypted vault. This allows team members to share sensitive information securely. You can save your credit card once and it can be shared with other business units and employees. NotPass Business creates strong hard to crack passwords by default with easy to configure password policies. But my personal favorite feature is the data breach notification because it allows you to change any passwords that were compromised in a data breach before any damage is done. But best of all, you can secure your business effortlessly with a three month NotPass Business free trial using the activation code UNIXGUY at notpass.com slash UNIXGUY. It's a limited time offer. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below and back to the video. I can't remember when I heard this, but I've been using this technique for the longest time. This is how I passed every difficult exam that I've ever done, but this is also how I can focus for extended periods of time on making these videos, on learning a difficult topic, or simply focus to do things at work. So my version of a time block is that I switch my phone off. I tried airplane mode, it didn't work, so I simply have to switch it off and I dedicate two hours just for studying. During those two hours, I'm not allowed to browse, I'm not allowed to read anything, it is just studying. It doesn't matter if I was focused for five minutes or if I was focused during the entire two hours, as long as I show up for my daily time block. Now, it's particularly useful for me because I work in consulting and I usually have to manage multiple clients at the same time and sometimes I have to even use different calendars and schedule my time blocks. This way, everyone knows not to bother me during those time blocks but because they also don't know what that time block is, so they assume I'm busy with some work-related tasks, so no one bothers me during those time blocks. Now, I have a to-do list that's divided into profession, obsession, and decompression. I label every task to identify to which pillar it belongs. So for me, profession is simply work meetings, client work, report writing, and whatever project I'm working in at my job. Those will all have the label of profession. Obsession at this point in time for me is finishing Hack the Box CDSA, which I talked about in this video because I got addicted to it and I'm a hacker man and this is what I have to do. So if you're in the process of trying to land your first cybersecurity job, then studying for a particular certification for you will get the label of obsession and you should add that to your calendar. Now Seinfeld in the 1980s used a physical calendar and he used to mark X on his calendar for each day where he followed his successful time block and this has made it addictive to me. So when I study for two hours per week, by the end of the week I have 14 hours. So I tricked my brain into enjoying the process of racking up more studying hours because I just love seeing that number go up. This way a seemingly tedious task can suddenly feel and look like a game and our brains love games and they love keeping scores and we love it when we continue to score higher and higher. Now for decompression I actually don't schedule specific tasks. I think this is way over board but instead I block my evenings and I just say recurring decompression activity whatever that is it could be watching tv playing video games whatever I feel like it on the day so this way I don't miss decompression but also really important for someone like me who once I get in the zone I don't want to stop so if I'm studying for something and I'm enjoying it and I want to continue doing it then I get a reminder that this is time to do some decompression activities so I stop and I follow my schedule this is helpful because it makes me less stressed overall and it ensures my long-term success now if you follow the method above you will have a superpower which is attention trust me if you are in control of your own attention you can do anything what's standing between you and the thing that you desire the most is attention if you can have focused attention for a long period of time then you can achieve anything but I must caution you even if you follow the method above this doesn't mean you will not ever get distracted so when you are in a time block where you know you need to study and you know you're not allowed to do anything else your mind will start to wonder you'll start to think of all sorts of random things. It took me years of research to understand why my mind was wondering. It's funny, why do I get a strange sudden craving for a cheesecake when I'm about to do a difficult lab for Hack the Box certification? It's really strange. I'm sure you've experienced it while you're studying for something or you're reading a paragraph, all of a sudden you have an urge to check your phone. You know that there is nothing important in your phone, but you still want to do it. You still want to look at those notifications. Trust me, I do that. So my initial thought was that it's probably social media's fault. So I thought if I switch my phone, all is well and that worked meaning I stopped having the urge to check my phone but my brain was still all over the place I was still daydreaming I was still thinking of random things and all of a sudden I started craving all sorts of different food for absolutely no reason now after years of trial and error I discovered that this was not because of social media it was not because I was hungry and it was not because
because I was naturally a daydreamer. In fact, what I found that it was all because of emotions. The reason why I was craving cheesecake it wasn't because I was hungry, it was because I was bored. I was bored, I was uninterested, but more often than not, it was because I was scared. This happens anytime I'm learning a new topic or I face something difficult or challenging that I haven't done. I get scared, but my brain, instead of telling me that I'm scared, it starts to make me want to check my phone or read something online or go eat a snack. All of this so that my brain protects me from the uneasy and difficult feeling of fear. And you will face that as you're studying for your cyber security certifications as soon as things start to get hard you will start to question whether this is worth it or maybe you should be doing something else or maybe you need to check your phone or watch one more video or eat one more snack trust me all of this is because your brain is trying to protect you from feelings of fear or boredom and these are difficult emotions we don't like to deal with now this was essential to our survival we needed to feel fear because this is how we protected our lives from all sorts of dangers so when we used to live in caves and you were chased by a lion you needed to feel fear and your brain needed to protect you. Now unfortunately this is not helpful in today's world because studying for a cyber security certification is definitely not life-threatening yet our brain is constantly trying to get us away from doing the hard things that we know are important for our long-term success. So the way I learned to deal with this is that I started to acknowledge those feelings. So anytime I get an urge to eat a snack or check my phone I just ask myself am I really hungry? Is there really something important in my phone or am I simply just afraid? or bored. Usually for me it's fear and boredom. It could be something else for you. But once you start asking yourself these questions, you can unpack the source of these emotions. This has helped me a lot with dealing with those emotions and subsequently get a lot less distracted. So if I get an urge to check my phone, I remind myself that it's just because I'm afraid and that I need to spend just a little bit more time so I can understand the topic and this way all this nonsense fear will go away. The other extremely important tactic that has helped me with overcoming those emotions is that I change the language that I use to speak with myself. You see, I'm really good at helping other people, I'm good at coaching other people, but when it came to helping myself, I used to be extremely harsh and critical with myself. So if I miss one day of studying or if I miss my time block of studying, I used to call myself lazy and unproductive. I used really harsh language. Paradoxically, this was not helpful because this has led me to skipping more study sessions and quitting altogether, which is not what I wanted. Instead, I used more self-empathy. I just changed the language that I used to speak to myself and I started saying things like yep I skipped one studying session this is human nature it will pass and skipping one session or having one bad study session doesn't need to turn into one bad study week take it as it is move on and do it better in the next study session it's not a reflection of who I am as a person it's definitely not a reflection of who you are as an individual if you want to know more about my philosophy and how I got ahead in life and how I achieved all my goals constantly then this is a great video to start with and I'll see you there.